shoe with an iPhone? Don't use the camera app. Adobe just came out with something that absolutely blows it out of the water. All you have to do is download this free app and every single shot you take will look better. I'll start things off with an image that I captured using an iPhone 16 Pro Max along with Project Indigo. This is a 10x shot, meaning 10 times magnification. The 16 Pro Max tops out at a 5x telephoto lens, meaning that without any additional hardware, we have 5x optical zoom along with 2x digital. Now that digital zoom is normally a tenuous proposition because we're inventing pixels out of whole cloth which means upsampling, interpolation, maybe a little bit of AI, definitely some smoothing. Nothing like that is happening with Project Indigo. These are all real bona fide pixels by virtue of the fact that the app is at all times capturing, aligning, and combining multiple frames, up to 32 frames per shot, so that we have no interpolation and no AI. All right, let's back up for a second. This is a 1X version of that same scene. There are the flat iron that we were zoomed in on just a moment ago, surrounded by my incredibly unkempt backyard. More to the point, this is what's known as zero processing. So in other words, this is a direct data dump from the image processor, no compensation applied in the iPhone or out. And so even though this is a raw DNG file, complete with 10 to 12 bits of data per color channel. It is not a pretty thing. We have blown highlights. We've got crushed shadows, so much lost detail down right. And if I were to zoom in on the flat irons right here, I would say they are more noise than imagery, even though the, the ISO setting here is 80. So we've got plenty of natural light. And this is just an example of how your smartphone, whether an iPhone or otherwise, is more computer than camera. The camera hardware is actually pretty sketch. The magic happens where the software is concerned. So if I were to capture the same scene using Apple's default camera app, which I did right here, no compensation on my end, in other words, no development. So this is the image as it came out of the iPhone, even though it is a raw image and therefore no changes have been assigned, right? Actually, a lot has been done to this image automatically by the app. It has tamped down the highlights in the sky. It has breathed life into the shadows. That's all very well and good. But if you simultaneously expand the highlights and you expand the shadows, then what happens to everything in between your midtones get smashed and that's what's happened in this case we have so little contrast going on where we absolutely need it look at seal rock right there it looks terrible even though it is of course very tiny compare that to what we get if we were to use and i did use of course project indigo to capture that same scene we get this thing right here and again no compensation applied on my end so everything's happening in the iPhone, in the camera, as it were. Now, curiously, with 1X shots, you get this dark vignetting I found. They may change that, of course, and you can compensate for that. If you're capturing RAW, you can compensate inside Camera Raw or Lightroom or what have you. But otherwise, we have this great distribution of luminous levels across the entire range. So we have great sky detail, including these clouds right here. We've got great detail in the shadows, and it does not in any way, shape, or form come at the expense of the midtones, which are very smooth as well, because after all, Project Indigo is continuously capturing, aligning, and combining multiple frames. And if you find this is absolutely fascinating and mind-boggling as I do, won't you take a moment to subscribe and turn on notifications? In the meantime, let's take a quick look at how this all reconciles at 10x. This is zero processing, which is, doesn't even involve any interpolation. In order to go from 5x to 10x, we're just blowing up the pixels, and it is very noisy and boring and low contrast and bad color. Compare that to the image as processed automatically by Apple's camera app. It looks better, smoother details going on, and it is AI enabled. However, that doesn't hold a candle, a metaphorical candle to what we get from Project Indigo. So here's Seal Rock, and it, it gets this great lighting in the evening. And you may say, well, it's kind of smooth detail going on there. And if you look closely, 
some of this stuff kind of doesn't reconcile very well. So if there's movement going on in some of the vegetation, then from frame to frame, then it's going to get a little mushy, but it still looks so much better, even though it's very smooth. It's real detail compared to the made up sort of chunky kind of whatever munch stuff that we're seeing in the uh, Apple camera image right here and what really tells the story i think is the deciduous leaves so unlike the evergreens which don't move all that much in a breeze deciduous leaves do so if you got a breeze going like we do here then some stuff just kind of turns to mush and then the other stuff is not good i would say it looks good on an iphone screen but it's not looking good here on the desktop compare that once again to what we get from Project Indigo, we get nice depth of field going on. If there's some motion blur, if there's some moving stuff, it does move. So, but it looks good. It looks natural. And then the still leaves are rendered beautifully. And that's because they're made of real pixels from one frame to the next. There is no classic interpolation and there is certainly no AI. Hey, real quick, as we've seen, iPhone photos are more software than hardware, but the internal processing is only half the battle. The real magic happens when you develop the raw data in say Lightroom or Camera Raw. To see what I mean, join my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. And now, back to the hard one, not to mention free, genius behind Project Indigo. Now at this point, you may wonder how Project Indigo pulls off this parlor trick. Well, here is an actual screenshot of the app. I'm not going to provide a full tutorial or anything like that, but I will offer some highlights here. For one thing, you know, pay attention to the green light. And so I just note that it's there. It's up there in the island. It's going to appear whenever you're using any camera app on the iPhone, and it means that frames are getting buffered. So it's not as if you're recording a video. It's not actually saving the frames, but they are you know, being buffered in any given moment of time. The old ones are getting thrown away. New ones are getting added. But it does mean that you want to take care as to what direction you're pointing your cameras while you're using the app. So just thought I'd throw that out there. You also have these levels of magnification. They are going to vary depending on your specific model of iPhone and what cameras are available. And then you have SR super resolution for zoom levels in between, which is pretty handy. If you're trying to zoom in the 10X in the standard camera app, you have to do a pinch zoom and it's all kind of vague and it's a little more difficult to control. Now, when you have a standard lighting situation, you're working in the photo mode as opposed to the night mode. We'll talk about that in a moment. Then you have what's known when you tap the shutter release right here is zero shutter lag. There's no shutter, of course, included with an iPhone, but what it's doing is it's going back to the last frame, the frame right before you tapped it, and it's using that as a kind of guide frame, and then it's gathering other buffered frames and aligning and merging them. Now, the alignment and merging happens very quickly because all these frames are buffered, so it just takes no time at all, again, under standard lighting conditions. But here's what I think is really interesting. Notice this button right here. It goes ahead and switches you to a pro mode, which includes things like manual focus. You can set the ISO. You've got exposure compensation. So stuff you might expect. But this is what I think is really interesting here is this sort of shake icon. And it only appears in the pro mode. It goes away in a standard mode, which I think is a mistake. It should be here all the time, in my opinion, because it's very valuable. Now, red is bad. So there are there are four levels to this thing. Red means you're you're shaking and a quaking. And I, in my defense, I only encountered this when I was trying to take a screenshot at the same time I had it set to 10x when I was pointed at a distant subject. So that's when things got wiggly for me. Normally, you're going to see yellow, I would expect, which is good. And it's going to be less shaky looking. And if you're kind of bracing the phone against the surface or you're bracing your elbows, something along those lines, then you may see white, which tells you it's not a lot of shake going on. Very little shake. And then if it detects a tripod, it's going to turn green. So those are the settings right there. Yellow or white is really good. You want a little bit of shake. Don't go deliberately wiggling the phone around. That would be madness. But a little bit of shake provides you with a little variation between pixels. 
the pixels associated with the various frames. And what it's doing is effectively increasing the resolution of the image for real because you're creating pixels between pixels from one frame to the next. It is nothing shy of, in my humble opinion, absolute genius. All right, now let's turn our attention to low light, AKA night shots. This is much more of a mixed bag than I anticipated it would be. I was prepared to be more amazed. I'll show it to you and see what you think. This is an establishing shot, just so you can see that it's a metallic pig. It's not moving. It's the one X lens. I don't have a lux value for you, but it is so dark. I can barely see what I'm doing. All the lights are turned off. There's no artificial lighting whatsoever. And so this highlight right here is coming from ambient light and it's nighttime. So I can't tell you the state of the moon because I didn't pay attention, but it's this dark, essentially. This is zero processing right here. It's noisy as heck. It's hard to make it out because it's so dark. So I raised the exposure value in Lightroom slash Camera Raw so you can see it's a bunch of chunky, colorful blocks of noise. Obviously, this is not acceptable in any way, shape, or form, which is why we're blessed by the miracle of the various automated apps that are available to us, including Apple's camera app. And so that's what we saw at the outset. And it fares very, very nicely. Now it's known that under low light, the camera app is going to blend buffered frames. To what extent is not known. It also is known that it's using AI to some extent or other, to what extent is unknown. These are trade secrets after all, but we've got all kinds of great reflections. We have wonderful depth of field going on. We have this nicely defined tusk, more on that in a moment. And by the way, we do have some noise, but it's not, you know, it's not exceptional. I would say it's the kind of noise you would expect in a night shot, right? Whereas this is what I achieved using Project Indigo. It's very noisy and a lot of color noise as well as luminance noise and some really bad examples of color noise like this red garbage right here, which is nowhere to be found on the actual metallic pig. And so just a note about how I captured this. I did not use a tripod. I tried a lot of tripod stuff, but I found this to be the most illustrative. What I did in this case is I secured the phone this is gonna sound nuts, but I pressed it down into an upright roll of paper towels because that way I could recompose the shot very easily while keeping the camera very, the phone that is, very steady from one app to the other. And I was able to switch to, between them using the action button. And so on the you know iPhone 16 Pro Max, so that's great. Anyway, the thing is, I did not get a green icon, right? That that shake icon did not turn green for me because a tripod was not detected. If it had been, then Indigo would have gone ahead and blended a bunch of buffered frames, but it would not have auto aligned them. It would, the alignment would have been assumed. In other words, instead the shake icon was white, meaning it's a steady shot, but there is gonna be some auto alignment. But I did the same thing for both of these images by the way. And so it's a fair comparison. Now, in some regards, well, first of all, I decided, you know, th th this is a real world example, right? So of course, I'm going to take it into Lightroom or Camera Raw and apply denoise. And I came up with this right here, as compared to not addressing the noise in the Apple camera app shot. All right, so in some regards, the image that I captured with Indigo is better. So especially in these highlights right here, notice this region right here, we have a lot of detail. So a lot of tonal values going on, whereas we don't, there's not much action here. Notice this area is bright all the way through in the camera app shot. Forgive me, it's hard to say these things. The tusk, however, looks way better. Oops, I'm trying to draw a selection outline. It looks way better where the Apple camera app shot is concerned, but that may be a function of AI, which is not employed by the Indigo app for what it's worth. So it ends up looking kind of gummy and blurry by comparison. But here's what's more concerning 
I'm going to zoom in on this detail right here. This is the camera image once again. Notice that we have some kind of scrapey texture right there. That is part of the pig. I just went up and checked it out. It is definitely a real detail that does not show up at all where the Project Indigo capture is concerned. And more worrisome is that the denoise function found noise and then found texture and they're kind of butting up against each other. So we have this truly unrealistic differentiation between noise and not noise. And it is most pronounced, I think, right down here. Notice this detail, how we've got this scrapey action going on. Again, this is the Project Indigo image compared to what I got from Apple's Capture, which doesn't exhibit that detail at all. Not so much because it's not there necessarily. There is some scrapey action going on on the actual pig, but because that is declining into the natural depth of field. So we're going from sharply focused details to naturally out of focus details. And so I would give the edge where this particular experiment is concerned, very low light, modestly handheld experiment. I would give the edge to the camera app over Project Indigo. But just because I like to end on a positive note, you know, Here's a light switch. I mean, I know it's not a, a terribly exciting shot, but this light switch that I captured at well beyond 10x. So this is like 17, 18x territory, just random zoom. This is zero processing right here. So just blown up pixels. It looks tragic, of course. And this is low light. I would not call it, I would not call it night shot right but you can see that these two switches are turned off so it's just, it's a it's a demonstration that demonstrates itself i tell you and this switch is turned on but it's very dimmed it's almost all the way dimmed you can see that and that's the only source of light so it's it's a bank of lights frankly but it's it's a low light shot and it looks terrible with zero processing this is how it looks when captured by Apple's camera app, which suggests to me that it's not blending frames, that this is a single frame shot. So you've got to go lower with the light than this to get frame blending out of the camera app. And, but you know, again, it's not something that you have direct control over. Whereas check it out. So this is like, this is like 18 X magnification. This this is what it looks like when captured by Project Indigo, which is absolute slam dunk. It looks awesome, by the way. You can almost read that the switches say Lutron on them. So you can almost read the type. And you can see that there's a defect in the plaster in the wall and all that good stuff. So what do you think? Thinking thoughts? Questions? Comment below and then subscribe and turn on notifications. Did I mention patreon.com slash Deke now? Yes, I did. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke now.